What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the recap. Now, if you follow me on Twitter, this is probably a surprise to you because I did mention that I was done. Um, I had no energy. But guess what? That second burst of energy is here. I watched a lot of basketball, and I'm here to talk about it. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. This should go without saying, but I only talk about the games that I watch. Yeah, I do read through the comment section. People are like, Kenny, you didn't talk about this game. That's because I didn't watch it. And personally, I don't feel confident talking about things that I, I didn't watch. So let's, let's do this. Let's do this thing. I always try to experiment with these titles, with the thumbnails of things. We did it when the Utah Jazz had first started their hot streak. I, I, I had them in the title and in the thumbnail. And guess what? That video was one of the worst videos on this channel. But I don't even care at this point. I've been waiting for the perfect moment to talk about Shea Gills Alexander. And he is the top of today's show. Because today, a career Night. Now, if you've been a fan of mine, you know that I have been on the Shea Gills Alexander bandwagon since literally his first summer league game. I don't watch college basketball, so I know people that have been, been fans of him before that. But when I watched him for the very first time in summer league, I have at attached myself to him because I saw what I saw and I was like, this guy is going to be amazing in the NBA. One thing that I feel like a lot of incoming rookies struggle with, especially at the guard position, is their ability to pace. And this man, Shea Gills Alexander, will not speed up for anybody. He will not slow down for anybody. Everything that he does is on his own pace he rarely turns the ball over really makes mistakes on the basketball court he's high IQ man those are the type of guards I really like and, and today was one of those days where he was unstoppable now what I was excited to do yesterday and today was try to figure out the players that were on the NBA all-star snub list and see how they would react to their first game back because I know there's built up anger on some of these dudes and Shea was like unofficially a snub because he does have the counting stats and everything to be in the conversations and when the final the final voting comes out I wouldn't be surprised if some coaches did want him in the all-star game because he has been that good this season today Best player on the court by far. Times where he was literally unguardable. And like I mentioned, he plays at his own pace. His jump shot isn't one of those super fast ones. But guess what? You can't do anything about it when he's trying to pull up for it. So I've, I've said this from the very first uh, couple games of the season. I am so jealous of some of the stuff that OKC has done with, like, the Shea Gills alexander trade and him blossoming to where he is now. And, of course, we got to talk about Lou Dort because, honestly, the way Shea Gilgis alexander was playing today, he could have ended with 55. He could have ended with 60. But it was actually Dort. That man Dort in the fourth quarter taking over and then eventually hitting the last shot. Now, this is a very interesting game for you to watch, and I, I wouldn't expect a lot of people to because it's the Spurs and the OKC, who's not, again, not one of those contending type teams. But this was fun. Patty Mills, man. Patty Mills had the most brain fart move of the entire game. The man had a double dribble that led to eventually the Lou, the Lou Dort three. Um, but what was surprising to me is that Patty Mills got the call on this one, especially because DeJounte Murray was the guy that was taking over for the Spurs. Patty Mills did hit a few shots in the fourth quarter, but I thought it was going to go to the high hand, and at that point, it was DeJounte Murray. Now, personally, I came into this game a little bit late, and I was like, man, is LaMarcus Aldridge not back from injury? He's back from injury, but he's coming off the bench, so he is slowly sliding in his career, and I don't know what the next step is for him. Um, they was actually starting Lucas Shamanich. Yes, I said it right for the first time in my life. Um, he was starting. And, I mean, the Spurs are also a decent team in, in the playoff hunt as well. But this is a game where we have to shout out Shea Gilles Alexander. We have to shout out Lou Dort. My personal collection of Shea Gilles Alexander cars is about, about yay high. It's, it's a lot of them. Okay, the next game I want to talk about is the Miami Heat versus the Toronto Raptors. Because these are two teams, overall, when you look at the standings, are struggling teams, two of the teams that we consider contenders last season, still trying to find their footing, and the Miami Heat are in the process of doing that. Now, I'm not saying that the Raptors aren't because they just went on their own little win streak before this. I think they had a back-to-back, -back, um, and, and Kyle Lowry was his first game back. So both teams are slowly trying to start uh, uh, find their footing, and today the Miami Heat end up on, I think, four-game win streak, eight of their last 11, so they're making it happen now. This is what we love about a player like Jimmy Butler. There are not many players in the league that can literally take over a game in the fourth quarter, and today that was Jimmy. If I'm not mistaken, he scored like scored or an assistant on 14 of the last 16 points in this game, just literally being the dominant player that he can be. And, and sometimes I think about the trade with the Bulls that got us Zach Levine and Laurie Marketing. And I still think about what could have been if Jimmy Butler was here and we had a competent front office to build around him because we gave up on him because we didn't see another step for him. And, well, we were wrong. And I say we like I was in the front office. Uh, fire guard packs. It's, it's already been done. But they gave up on him um, because they thought at 28 years old, I think he was, when the trade happened, that was it. That was all. What he was is what he was, and that was obviously not true. And he turned into a guy that can legitimately take over games. I was surprised at the way Nick Nurse kind of coached down the line where, like, some of the lineups he ran were, like, Pascal on the bench uh, for cl cl cr crunch time. But then you realize, um, I went back to look at the box score from yesterday. He played, like, almost 50 minutes yesterday. So it's like, you know what, maybe he deserved uh, – 
a little a little time off. But somebody else was on the bench late in this game, too. Oh, Chris Boucher, who's having a, big, a good game, too, was on the bench, and they moved the small ball lineup, and the Miami Heat took advantage of that, and it led to a Jimmy Butler uh, win. I did not watch all of Cavaliers versus Rockets, but the Rockets continue to skid, and Jared Allen dominating. Second game in a row, dominant performance. Yesterday I didn't do a call game episode, but I think Lamar Stevens called game on a dunk. So the um the Sexland Cleveland Cavaliers thing starting to turn back up just a little bit. I, I do want to go back though to some of the first games of the day, where it was the Atlanta Hawks versus the Boston Celtics. Um, yesterday video we mentioned how a lot of people were upset about Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown making it into the All Star game when the Celtics were sub 500, and where they lost another game to a team that was also struggling, led by Gallinari, the Rooster, really turning up. And not only did he hit, I think it was nine of ten threes, nine of eleven threes, or whatever. He was hitting some of them things from the logo, three seconds, four seconds into the shot clock. He was just feeling it, and this is a big game for him because. Pretty much for the entire season, he had been struggling. This could be that breakout game that they really want him to to get him to the production that they paid him to. I don't know. It could happen. Uh, but a big win for the Atlanta Hawks. Trey Young bounce back was just a win. And honestly, if you're if you're asking Trey Young, I think he probably prioritized the win more than the All Star appearance. And I, and I think him getting more wins will probably get him a little bit more respect amongst the coaches and around the league. But the Boston Celtics, man, it is very very rough. No Kimba Walker again. Marcus Smart being out has been the the biggest detriment to this team. I mentioned this last time we were talking about the Boston Celtics woes, where like Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown don't really play together and and. Jason Tatum is a tough shot taker and a tough shot maker, but when he's not making those tough shots, it seems like empty possessions where you could have got way better looks. And today was one of those days where it's like, man, he would dribble the ball for a few seconds and, and hoist up a shot, and you like you can't really complain because he is an all-star and he's made that shot before, but maybe you want to get a better look, especially in a game like tonight. It just overall was really bad, and I know Boston Celtics fans are going through it, especially when you consider the expectations of this team coming into the season and where they are right now. If I am not mistaken, the Chicago Bulls have a better record or higher in the standings than the Boston Celtics. Bulls, let's get it out of the way. I, it's been a long time since I've had hope, y'all. I feel like I feel like Hawkeye. Don't give me don't give me that hope, man. Because for the last couple of seasons, I've been able to watch basketball objectively because my Bulls didn't matter, and now we kind of matter because we're fighting for a playoff spot. So I'm looking at some of the other teams above us in the Eastern Conference, kind of low key praying for their downfall so my Bulls can get up there. Today was a, the most um, the the weirdest game. I mean, at the end of the day, when the Bulls don't take care of the ball, they end up being bad. And today they look bad against one of the worst teams in the league. I think technically the worst team in the league record wise, the most dumb overtime of all time. I'm not a guy that again that complains about refing, but today go rewatch the last minute of Bulls versus Timberwolves, and I mean like in regulation. You come back to tell me what you think about that refing. Um, I'm just happy that we ended up pulling it out in, in overtime because if we would have lost this game, I kind of would have been hot about it. You know what I'm saying? Anthony Edwards does his thing. Talking about the Timberwolves now. Anthony Edwards does this thing where, like, he'll have a couple big moments amongst the game. And then uh, you look at the box score, and, and I feel like Nate Duncan here. You look at the box score and be like, oh, snap, this man actually is 7 for 20. And I think in the last five or six games, he's shooting like 30% from the field is what the, the guys on the Chicago Bulls broadcast were talking about. So he'll have the highlights that you to watch it not be dunk. But then uh, he's just not playing well. Man, did that turn into Nate Duncan in one week? I don't really know. Um, Carthony Towns. I mean, this team is a team that has lost a lot of games by this much. And with the new coaching change, maybe those some of those losses turn into wins. But right now, it hasn't really been that. Um, shout out to the Bulls, man. Are they giving me hope? Maybe. Next game, LaMelo Ball versus the Phoenix Suns. There was a point in this game where it was it was all tied up, right? And I was in my mind, I was like, this is Chris Paul's moment. And I even think my boy Rusty Buck is tweeted, it's Chris Paul time. Because I think that's what everybody think. And when it's late in the fourth quarter tie game, you expect it to be Chris Paul to, to really make those moves, right? Well, it was the rookie. It was LaMelo Ball literally taking over the fourth quarter and talking. And, and staring people down. Like we said it before, this man is the real deal. And it's cool to see Malik Monk continue to get minutes, earning those minutes and playing very well in those minutes. The Hornets are a fun team. We've said it over and over again. When you have moments where LaMelo Ball is literally taking over games, it's hard not to say that it's must-watch TV. I'm not tripping about the Suns' uh, loss. They didn't even – they just didn't play well. They didn't protect the ball. Uh, some of the shots are very lazy, so I'm not really tripping about that. But the Hornets, big-time win. And I think those are all the games I really watch. I tried to be invested in Jazz versus Lakers, but it being a blowout after the, what, halfway through the second quarter, I was like, nah, can't really do it. 
Um, but LeBron, if let me see how many minutes. LeBron ended up playing 28 minutes, which is good because uh, they were getting blown out. And y'all know LeBron is leading the league in minutes this month. So good, good thing for him to not end up getting a ton, a ton of minutes. I guess bad that they end up losing the game. But if you're a Lakers fan, you're probably chilling at the end of the day just because Anthony, Anthony Davis will be back eventually and immediately you're back to a title contender. I wouldn't look at some of these losses because you're going to lose a decent amount of games to Anthony Davis comes back because he's such a big part of your team. I wouldn't look at these losses and try to gauge a how talented the team is um, because Anthony Davis does play that big of a part. And then that's those are all the games I actually watched. I really wanted to tune in to Pacers versus Warriors because, like I mentioned, uh, the snub list – and DeMont Sabonis had a good stat line here. I will have to go back and rewatch this because more than a DeMont Sabonis stat line, I need to see how the hell the Warriors won a game when they shot 20% from three as a team that shoots threes. How did Draymond Green score double digits today? That doesn't happen in 2021. Today it did. So I got to rewatch those. And I've been trying to keep up with uh, James Wiseman's play um, since he's come back. So I do definitely need to rewatch that game tonight. And that's all I got, guys. Uh, let me know what you think today. The Shea Gibbs Alexander love is real. And I guarantee you, fo follow me on Twitter. Tomorrow morning I will wake up. And I know that it's going to be a 10 of 10 video, which means that out of the last 10 episodes of this show we have uploaded, today's episode is going to be the worst viewed because I'm titling it about Shea Gibbs Alexander. But I don't even care. He's the real deal. He's the absolute real deal, and I, I know you agree. Leave a like, subscribe, call game.